Hello guys, my name is Rizky from A Creative Op. One of my dreams as a video producer is actually to produce a full featured horror movie. Recently, during the Halloween time, I had the opportunities to produce a short horror movie. And in this video, I just want to share what I actually learned from that particular experience. Being a corporate video producer and a corporate photographer, producing a short horror movie is actually something that is totally out of my comfort zone. And it's something that I have never done before except for an advertisement piece or a marketing content. Unlike many other video guys, I have a slightly different career path whereby a lot of video producers actually started from doing short movies before they actually done any client's works or corporate video. I happens to be lucky enough to bypass that process after my career and events lines. From there, I had a lot of opportunities to produce different videos. Of course, during this particular process, there are a few challenges and a few mistakes that I would like to share, a few good decisions that I was lucky enough to make during that particular process. So if you haven't watched the short movie, you can actually watch it at our YouTube channel. And mind you, there is actually a gore content inside. So if you are not into horror, if you are not into gory stuff, uh, please don't watch it. My intentions for this is actually to create some sort of a, a proof of concept. What I have in mind is actually to have a series based on this particular concept. And this particular short movie actually inspired by one of my favorite movies of all time, which is The Alien, but of course uh, with a little bit of twist. And this is actually a shortened version of that particular story. If you want to read the full story, you can actually check at this link below. We always try to do a Halloween content, which because the fact that Halloween is actually my favorite festive season of the year. So at the beginning of the year, I have really started to do a rough storyboard. I was actually planning to shoot this much, much, much earlier, but one of our videographer just left, so we kind of understaffed. So we have a bit of a manpower issue. Before we know it, it's already October, and I haven't even started on this particular project just yet. One week that we totally don't have any events on the week of October, I uh, decided to simply just uh, do the projects and decided on that we are going to produce the project. The first thing that I did was actually to find the talent because I believe this is not an easy project to act out. That we need a uh, really good talent to actually portray this role. So I posted a casting call on a local Facebook group for actors and actresses. Uh, I was lucky enough that a experienced actress, Isabella, contacted us and I believe she's actually the perfect person to actually portray the role. And this actually happens only probably about one week before the actual shoot itself. We have a really limited budget since this is a uh, not a client project. I understand really well that we are not going to make any money from this project. I fork out my own money to basically to fund this project so I, I don't want to spend too much. So ended up we decided to book a studio. The reason why we decided to use a studio is because the fact that everything is, is really there. It's kind of like, a, like an empty canvas and we can just bring stuff inside, uh, bring the lights, plug it up and, and I actually pull in my old friend William who is actually a really experienced uh, cosplay photographer to actually become our art director. I think he did a really good job on this thing based on what we have that day. The next challenge comes with the uh, prosthetic. The concept requires for us to have this fake pregnant belly which I ordered from overseas. There's no one in Singapore that actually sells this. Two days before the shoot, the prosthetics have not arrived yet. So I was kind of nervous that the prosthetic doesn't come in time. I have already started to think about plan B. If the prosthetic doesn't come in time, what will I do? So of course, uh, I was lucky enough that Mr. Roger Ng had one available that he actually used for another shoot. I managed to get it from him and at the same time, just one day before the shoot, the the prosthetic that I actually ordered actually arrived. I was pretty like uh, relieved that we have those so we can actually do the shoot. And this actually goes into the uh, challenge that we face. The prosthetic that we use, uh, it's really realistic looking, but at the same time, it's actually too reflective as compared to our skin. So you can see this, this shiny portion that makes it, it looks really fake. What I did is actually to do a bit of photoscopy basically. It's like photoshopping on video, so basically I painted over that particular part. Another challenge that we face is actually to have this uh, finale of this particular movie itself, whereby the creature actually burst out from 
our lead actress Bali. I want this particular finale to be pretty strong. You know, basically there are a lot of movies where we just simply cut it before it actually happens and let the audience to decide uh, what actually happens. I know really well that people who are actually into this horror types of movie want to actually see this particular finale itself. So I don't want to have that particular shortcut. Uh, I was actually tempted to just simply do a practical effects. This basically cut the prosthetic and stuff stuff inside and we manually pull out do a bit of a touch up afterwards. I think I made a right decision to not do it because if I were to do it, I only have one chance. We have limited budget and limited time. I know that we may screw it up, so I put this uh, finale uh, effects as a visual effects. So what I did is actually to create uh, a 3D model of the belly. I saw this are uh, really cool tutorials done by one of my favorite channel for video production, which is the Corridor Crew, whereby they actually create an, an exploding head. The same method for this particular shot. Uh, my background was actually a 3D designer, so I know how to use 3D software. I still work on 3D software once in a while. Anytime our clients need some assistance on designing an event stage or an exhibition. But the 3D software that I'm really comfortable with is actually 3D Studio Max. The tutorials that was uh, created by Corridor Crew was actually done in Blender. I decided to learn the new software. It's not the best time to actually learn new software but I do believe when there's a need, there's a reason to learn and you can learn it faster. And I have never touched Blender before so I downloaded the software and created uh, this particular visual effects in Blender. I managed to create the explosion part. Uh, and, and I think it's, uh, it's pretty realistic in terms of animation but the problem is this particle system it's only one small part of the visual effects itself uh, the second part is actually lighting I doubt that I can actually learn the lighting portions in such a short period of time in order for me to create something that's realistic enough to be put on the video so I decided to go back to 3D Max and try to recreate this particle scene and ended up I actually used the one that I did in 3D Max instead of the one I did in Blender. Although the animation in Blender is actually much better but with the one I did in 3D Max I can light the scene better, I can actually blend it better with the actual footage from the shoot. I actually have a small easter egg in the video creature that actually came out from the actress belly is actually a chestburster from Alien, just as a tribute for my love for the Alien series. With this short movie, there are a lot of things that I can improve on. The entire video was actually done within uh, $2,000 budget. I kind of cheated a bit because we actually used all the equipments that we have had the relief on. Uh, so most of the budget actually spent on the uh, crews and the talent. We don't have any dedicated costume department to actually uh, produce this movie. So I was actually sourcing the attire that the actress wore uh, myself and I realized that even I just want to buy a white robe and white like pants. There are so many different types of white. Another thing that I learned is we follow the storyboard accurately but we should have taken a lot more shots from different angles uh, just as a fillers so that we can actually do faster cuts to create the uh, intensity that we actually need during the finale. Lastly, since in this particular short movie, I didn't work with any clients at all. So typically in a, a corporate video or an event video that we always do for clients, the clients will always have the last say. So we can do multiple drafts and send to the client. Once the client approves, the video is good to go. In this particular project, I don't have anyone to practically approve the video. So I am the only person to actually approve the video and I keep second guessing myself change the color grading I, I realized how important it is to have a second opinion on your work so just simply to share what I've learned the best thing about doing this project is actually a reminder that you need to always try out something out of your comfort zone so that you can actually learn new stuff and go further thank you so much for watching I hope this video is useful and I'll see you next time